That was the perfect start. Thank you all very much. Thank you. What a way to start off a Friday, right? This is fantastic. Thank you all for being here. I have been around football as long as I can remember, and it has truly been one of the most influential parts of my life and my family's. For all of us, football was just an everyday part of life, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But one day of the week in particular always held the most special memories for me, and that was game day. Game day wasn't fun or entertainment for us. Game days were work days. My dad, my mom, me, and my brother Brian would drive to the stadium hours before kickoff. My dad would yawn over and over again. He told us he was releasing his nerves. We would sing along to Motown or the Eagles, and he might tell us when to watch for a trick play. As he walked into the stadium tunnel, he gave us all a hug and a kiss and walked into the locker room. And the switch flipped for my dad. He was now Marty Schottenheimer, NFL head coach. It was game day. It was time to compete. It was time to win. And watching him on the sidelines is where I have some of the most vivid and proud memories. Watching him command the game, command his players with such intensity and fire. He was almost electric running up and down the sidelines, constant motion. Yet he was so in tune with everything around him. He could sense when a player needed a private and encouraging moment on the bench. Then, in an instant, be right up in an official face loudly explaining <laughs> how they screwed up how they screwed up that last call. <clears throat> My dad always gave NFL films an earful of colorful dialogue. You could see the passion and grit in his eyes. He would bark to his players, keep grinding men, keep grinding away at them. He was dominating and relentless and fierce. This was my dad on game days. Fast forward to today. Now, our game days are high school football games for my son, Brandon. The ride to the stadium is much more subdued. <laughs> I work patiently to buckle my dad into his seat. He sits quietly. There's no singing and no yawning. Sometimes he hums to himself. We arrive at the stadium and he asks, why are we here? He struggles to shuffle slowly through the parking lot, then asks again, why are we here? As we enter the stadium, while the players are warming up on the field, he glazes over as if he doesn't even see them and watches kids on a nearby playground. The game starts and he stands ready to leave, confused as to why we are here. I explained to him that we are here to watch Brandon play football. <coughs> and I retie his shoes. He doesn't cheer or show much emotion. He sits. He just sits. And it is crushing for my mom and I to watch him literally be in the world he once loved and commanded, considered his life, and to find him, yet he doesn't even know we are at a football game. It is just emptiness. 
emptiness in his eyes, emptiness in his head, but not in his heart. You can still see his heart when he flashes his smile. God, I love that guy. <laughs> Alzheimer's has stripped my dad of his memories, sucked away his dignity, and stolen him from my mom and our family. But all the characteristics that made him a legendary coach, grit, determination, passion, competitiveness, and heart are exactly how we are going to change the face of Alzheimer's. And we are not going to wait for funding or research or a cure. We're going to do it now, right now, today. And the best part is, my dad is the one who has given us the game plan. He has already told us how to win. The fans called it Marty Ball. The grandkids have renamed it to be a bit more current. Inside our family, we call it hashtag shoddy strong. Whatever you want to call it, we're going to use that game plan to help people dealing with Alzheimer's. We're going to teach them how to have better days. In politically correct terms, we might say something like, we're going to tackle Alzheimer's. But if it was 20 years ago on an NFL sidelines, <laughs> you would hear my dad's voice boom, we're going to kick Alzheimer's ass. And his game plan is pretty simple. You take what you have, you take what you're good at, you take where you are, and you just make it work. It's a mindset, a mental toughness, to be resilient and adaptable and have perspective. And this game plan was built on the foundation of team togetherness. And it was built by two of the most amazing and strong people I know, my dad and my mom. This game plan was built on the field and off. My mom and dad always worked together as a team. And sticking together was never more important than on a Monday morning after a loss. Brian and I dreaded going to school. We knew that there would be constant teasing and kids would say nasty things about our dad. I dealt with it by puffing out my chest and basically daring them. <laughs> Go ahead, say something about my dad. <laughs> Brian was younger and it was harder. I remember one morning, he wouldn't even get out of bed. Tears streaming down his face. Mommy, no, it's too hard. Please don't make me go to school. We climbed into bed and my mom wiggled her fingers and she said, do you see this? This is our family. This is daddy. This is me. This is you. This is Kristen. And our silly puppy Molly, she's the crazy thumb. My mom closed her hand together tight and she said, when we come together, our love comes together and we are stronger than anything. We are the fist. Brian's eyes got real big. She stood him up and she said, now you're going to school because you have us with you. Anytime you need us, you put your hand in your pocket and you make a fist. We are with you, we are together. Now that little boy is all grown up. He's a husband and a dad 
and the offensive coordinator with the Seattle Seahawks. My mom told him not to go into coaching. <laughs> he did it anyway, and he is fulfilling his dream. But that dream comes with a price. My dad is deteriorating, and Brian is 2,000 miles away. So some mornings, my mom will just text him the words, the fist. And just like when he was that little boy walking the school halls with his fist in his pocket, tight and safe, he does the same thing walking into the Seattle Seahawks training facility. Tight and safe, he knows we are together. We are stronger together. We are together no matter what, no matter where, no matter how hard, we are the fist. So Monday mornings after a loss were tough, even tougher right after the game. On the car ride home, my dad would rattle off third down conversion rates. We should have done this, we didn't do that. Brian and I never said a word. <laughs> At home, he would stomp through the house, rehashing every single play all night long until he went to work the next day. My mom, who the players nicknamed Big Pat, that's another talk for another time. <laughs> Big Pat laid down the law and implemented the midnight rule. You could rant and rave, feel sorry for yourself, and stomp around all night long until 12 midnight. At 12.01, you were moving on. We were preparing for the next game. We were moving forward. Now, today with Alzheimer's, the midnight rule is in effect pretty much every day. But one day will stay with me forever. I was at work and my mom called. She sounded scared, almost panicked. Big Pat never panics. She always has it together. But my dad had wandered off and he was lost. I rushed to them. Fortunately, friends had found him and they had taken him happily off to get a milkshake. He was fine. <laughs> my mom, she was in the car, visibly shaken. I climbed in and she started to cry. Then I did. And we just sat there and cried. All the loneliness, the fear, the guilt, the sadness came rushing out. One of our phones rang. We looked at each other and we said, okay. The midnight rule, we can do this. That day and on the days we need it, we give ourselves time to be upset, to feel sorry for ourselves. Then we fight through. We get up and we get after it. Of all the pieces to my dad's game plan, the most important one was actually first created while he was playing, but it is probably what he is most known for as a coach. He instilled in his players one play at a time. His players knew you were to focus on the play right in front of you, not the one that just happened or the one about to happen. I can still see him standing on the sidelines, surrounded by these enormous and powerful men, his eyes blazing with sheer will and theirs locked into his. And he would raise his finger and he would command, men, one play at a time. We win one play at a time. 
Now, today, with Alzheimer's, we don't waste energy looking too far behind at what was, who he was, how he was. Because all of that will suck us into a deep sadness. And we don't look too far ahead to when he's in a facility and he can't feed himself and he doesn't remember my name because if we do we will miss taking care of that moment the moment with him that won't go on forever so we focus on now we do life one play at a time we embrace our high school football game days. I hear you laughing, Dad. I hear you over there. I can't see you, but I hear you. I cherish that slow walk back to the car, hand in hand with my dad. I gently buckle him in, and I give him a hug and a kiss. He looks at me with his empty eyes, but smiles just long enough to say, KB, Kristen, you are my hero. And I can't help but giggle, just like I did when I was that little girl in his arms, because he has always told me that, that I am his hero. I smile. And I take in this moment. I am looking at my two heroes, the ones who have given me so many gifts, the gifts of enduring and unwavering love, the gifts of Marty Ball and Shadi Strong, to give to others, to make a difference. So, I blow my mom a kiss across to the driver's side. I give my dad another kiss. I poke my head in to the car and say, I love you guys. And I close the door. I fight back the tears. I fill with resolve. The switch flips for me. I am Kristen Schottenheimer, daughter of Marty Schottenheimer. It is game day, our game day. It is time to compete. It is time to win. Now let's go knock Alzheimer's on its ass. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Thank you so much.